The terminal is an important application for any developer or person in tech to use if they want to fully communicate and dive deep into the computer. And in this video, I'm going to show you two of my favorite terminals. And I think these two may also be the best terminals that you can download and use right now. All right, so let's start this off by saying I am on Mac OS. I actually just recently bought a new Mac Studio and I'm setting everything up. And if that's something that you want to watch, let me know in the comment section down below. But the first terminal that I want to talk about is Ghosty, and this is by Mitchell Hashimoto. So Ghosty is actually the terminal that's not publicly available just yet. It's going to be publicly available sometime in this in December. They, the team said at the end of the year, you can see note ghosty is still in private beta. Uh, and they have a very active discord server, which you can join, you can get update, you can see what the mods and developers are working on when it comes to ghosty. So I was fortunate that I was able to get a beta tester invitation to use Ghost. And here is the GitHub repository with all the updates, all the people working on it. You can see it's mainly written in Zig. They have a nice uh, download page you can click and you can see you can have different versions of the applications to download. So I'm going to use the universal one because this is not intended to be debugging. I just want to use a terminal. I actually have my new my ghosty config file here. If you are interested in it, I'll leave a link to the all the dot files I'll go through in the description of this video. So you can see here, this is the config I chose to run with when I was playing with ghosty and I actually really like it. So ghosty is really fast. It's super quick. You won't have any problems with it. It's not going to bog down or lag behind any of your commands. If you're running NeoVim or in in text editor, it'll be completely fine. And I really wanted to use Ghosty. I really want to just make this video about Ghosty. However, there is an issue with Ghosty and how it affects my current setup. So I talked earlier about how I use Mac OS and apparently with Mac OS and for whatever reason, I'm also using Yabai to be my tiling window manager. Whenever I open a new tab, you can see it automatically just gets out of whack. So I'll go ahead, I'll make this full screen again. Now you can see I have two tabs. Uh, I can jump between either of, the, either of these really quickly, super nice. But if I wanna make a new tab, you can see, again, it just kind of dwarfs it down to a smaller tab, a smaller window, and it really doesn't make it, like it just kind of throws everything out of whack for me. So unfortunately, this was a bit of a deal breaker. I really like Ghosty and it's in beta. However, you may be thinking, oh, well, because they're in beta can fix this issue, that's not, necessarily true because I actually made a tweet where I talked about Ghosty in West term, the second terminal, which we're going to go into in just a little bit. And I talked about the error I'm having. I actually also tagged Mitchell to see if he sees the issue and if the, if the team is aware of it. And unfortunately, this is kind of a issue that is baked in. So if I read what Mitchell said, I should also clarify the issue is not open, it's closed, but exists. It's closed because everything is working as intended and it's upstream to Apple, really, the accessibility API treats tabs as separate windows. So basically saying this is an Apple issue and there's nothing that their ghosty team can do to fix it. But this eventually led me to find a second terminal, which is what I'm gonna talk about in the rest of this video called Westterm. And Westterm is a powerful cross-platform terminal emulator and multiplexer written by at Wes and implemented in Rust. So I think that's already cool. It's a full on terminal written in the Rust programming language. Okay, so I have iTerm2 now because I'm gonna install uh, Westerm. So you can do brew, uh, install, dash, dash, cask, and then Westerm. So I already have it installed. You can go ahead and click this and it'll download Westerm for you. And the next thing that you wanna do before you open up Westerm is actually create a config file. So one of the best things that I think about Westerm is the config file is actually written in Lua, a, a programming language that you can actually define functions, define how you wanna use your key binds all through the Lua language, which I think is pretty convenient, especially if you're coming from NeoVim. So you can go ahead and do touch western.lua, this is gonna live in kind of the home directory of your account. I already have a Lua file, so which we can go ahead and open. And this is my western Lua file. So I have a few configs here, but it starts with actually requiring us to create this local western from the western API and create a configuration, which will act as our config builder. So my terminal editor config is actually very simple. All I have is some font sizing, some things that I want to do with the hot tab bar, uh, some optional things here that I think are not necessary for the functionality of Western, and then just opening pane. So I can open up a vertical pane and a horizontal pane. 
So if I do command space and I type in West term and I click open, it's gonna open up in a one of my windows. And if I open up here, this is Western based on my configuration file. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to my left tab. So you can see on the left, I have Western and on the right, I have my config file. So a few things that I really like about Western is obviously you can go make a new tab, you can switch between them pretty easily, nothing kind of stopping from doing anything there. Uh, another thing that I actually really like, which is the pane, so I can do a control shift alt, and then the uh, quotation symbol, so control shift alt quotation, and I have a second pane here, which I can swap between uh, the top one or the bottom one, and I can go ahead and do control D to get rid of it, and if I want to do a vertical pane, then it's control shift alt and pipe, so now I have a vertical uh, pane to go and navigate between, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people use Tmux for this and they use Tmux for more advanced functionality, but this is super convenient for me. And another really cool thing about Western and the Lua file is the changes you make are pretty much instantaneous. You can see here, my window background opacity is set to 0.8. I can, I can actually change this to something like 0.2, save the file, and you can see automatically changed what is rendered in my terminal. So I can go back and change it back to 0.8, save it, and boom. The first time you edit your Lua file, you're gonna have to save it, exit Western, and reopen it, and then it'll have that communication, that hot reloading, if you will. But I think that's just such a quality of life feature. And I added these as optional. I personally don't really like to have uh, window background passes 0.8 or like a blur. You can, again, change this to like 80. You can make the background super blurry, um, but it's up to you. I'll leave it for now because it's kind of growing on me, but it's uh, just a preference thing. So if you're interested in learning more information on how to configure your Westerm.lua file, the documentation linked down below is actually very in depth with how you can get started with defining your config file, which I already showed you how to do. And it gives you more into the theory of how they use Lua to configure the file and how they use hot reloading and can the file be loaded and a bunch of other things, especially going deeper into concepts like color and appearances, different fonts, launching programs, font shaping, keyboard concepts, the key bindings, and just a bunch of other stuff which you can explore and use to modify your own configuration file. So I also wanna talk about some terminal commands that I personally use. I don't have the deepest knowledge in the terminal world or I don't go too deep into it, but I think I have a, a few commands I think a lot of developers may enjoy if they haven't used them already. So I'll start off with FZF. So Fuzzy Finder, I know a lot of people use FZF, but it's a great way to search directories, search different files that you want. Um, you can just type in for anything you want. Like let's go into, I don't know, uh, root.go. And you can see it'll take me to all the files at root.go. I can go ahead and click this, take me to that file and I can go ahead and use it. Another popular one that I like is bat. So you can go ahead and do bat cmd slash root.go, the file that we just searched in the above fuzzy finding, and it will take me and open that file up with kind of a beautiful syntax highlighting, which is the key difference between bat and cat. If I do the exact same thing, instead of bat, uh, cmd slash root.go, and I do cat, uh, you can see it just looks like this. And I just think personally, this looks much easier. I'm able to understand what's actually written in the file as opposed to the more black and gray version that we have offered to us with cat. So two more tools that I really enjoy are Zish auto suggestion. You can see here when I type in CL, it's red indicating this isn't a valid command, but I make it clear, it becomes valid. It kind of goes and tells me if something I'm writing in the terminal is a valid command. So you can do FZF, this is valid. But if I don't have anything installed, let's say uh, Rust, it's gonna give me that, hey, I don't know where Rust is, it's not a valid command. And then another one we can do is the syntax is the autocomplete right here. So you can do cat and it'll automatically complete the rest of the command for me by just going right on the key. And then you can see it's gonna automatically work. If I do bat, go ahead, go back into my Zish RC file. And for most of you, subscribe to Melky Dev is gonna show you as red because most of you haven't subscribed. So you wanna probably change that to green by clicking the subscribe button and liking this video because it helps a lot. So this video is probably going to be one in a series. I am, I am currently exploring new Mac OS tools for my current setup. You can see here I have Yabai SKHD from my tiling window manager. I had iTerm2 and I'm currently using VS Code and I've replaced iTerm2 with Westterm, the terminal I showed you earlier. I've yet to look into Alacrity. I've explored Aerospace. I did not like it. A few bugs similar to Ghost, it just didn't work well with Mac OS. And then there are Zed and Neovim, which I haven't explored yet 
but I'm looking forward to it. And if you are, let me know in the comment section down below. I also want to give a quick shout out to Joe Sean Martinez, which is how I found about Western. Please go check out his video. It's super good. I use the foundation of how I can step and get started with Western and I'm pulling everything that I learned from his video into this one. So make sure to check out his video as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of a different one than the regular videos I make, but I did enjoy it. And let me know, are there anything that I'm missing? Are there any tools that you recommend for me to explore while I'm kind of going through the Mac OS setup? Let me know. But as always, peace.